Hello, it's Mr. Ops here, and we're going to talk about eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And so, um, if we're following along with the flow here, this will seem very disjoint from what we've been doing with transition matrices and diagrams and probabilities. But after a couple lessons, we have to learn the skills of calculating these, and it will come back to it as well. But these eigenvectors and eigenvalues are used in many different things, and so it's like a skill to calculate these that it's important for you to recognize. Okay, so what it's all about is about solving this equation. And when you think about this equation, this equation is actually really awesome. It's awesome in the sense that matrix A, I know is typically for us, at least, it's a 2 by 2 matrix. And X is our 2 by 1 matrix. And so when I multiply a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1, I get a 2 by 1 matrix. But this side here, I have a constant times a 2 by 1 and I still get a 2 by 1. So I multiply a full 2 by 2 by a 2 by 1. It's the same matrix at the end as multiplying some constant times a 2 by 1 matrix. And these 2 by 1s are the same to begin with. Well, that's kind of a crazy idea that there are values and vectors and values that this works for. And that's what eigenvectors and eigenvalues are. I know that this value lambda here it is called the eigenvalue. And there's usually, for a 2 by 2, there's going to be two of them. And this x here, the x, is going to be the eigenvectors. Because they're pretty special. It's a unique situation where this happens for. So if we take it through and we think about how in the world would we find those values, well, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to subtract lambda x. So that means it equals 0. And then I'm going to factor out the x. And so then I have a minus lambda. And I hope you recognize this is a problem because this is a 2 by 2 matrix subtract a constant, which I can't actually do. It doesn't make any sense. So what we do is we take this lambda and we multiply it by the identity matrix i which is a 2 by 2, and now I can actually subtract them. And so if I'm going to try and solve this particular equation, well, I know this has to be 0. a minus lambda i equals 0, or x is 0. Well, if x is 0, then my eigenvector is 0 and everything's 0, and it's really not very interesting. This is boring, so we don't worry about this one. We ignore this scenario. We call this the trivial solution. We look at this one. And in order for this to be 0, one of two things can happen. This, All these values could be 0. And again, that's the boring situation. If they're not 0, then what happens is there's an infinite number of solutions. In order for this to have an infinite number of solutions, the determinant of this value here has to be zero. It has to be a singular, this has to be a singular matrix. And if you want to know the reason why that has to be true, I'll make a separate video that's all about the theory behind this. But actually all you need to recognize is that the determinant is zero and this equation here, this one here, is what we call the characteristic polynomial. And so we'll be making this equation equal to zero a lot. Uh, just on a side note, there'll be sometimes you might see it written as lambda i minus a, this determinant equals 0, doesn't matter. It's the same situation either way. Okay, so let's actually use this idea and try our problem. So we have a is 2, 7, negative 1, negative 6, and we're going to calculate the characteristic polynomial. Well, if you remember from up here, I know the characteristic polynomial is determinant a minus lambda i equal to 0. This is what I need to do. Okay, so I need to do this. And so I'm going to go 2, 7, minus 1, minus 6, subtract lambda times 1, 0, 0, 1. And so I multiplied lambda times 1 because it was the identity matrix times lambda. 
and then I'm actually going to go 2 minus lambda, and then 7 minus 0, minus 1 minus 0, and negative, and negative 6 minus lambda, minus 6 minus lambda. And this is this matrix inside here. And I want the determinant of that to be 0. And so the notation for the determinant, one notation that exists, absolute value of it equals 0. So that means when I do 2 minus lambda times negative 6 minus lambda, subtract uh, those two multiplied, which is negative 7, has to be 0. And so now I just do some algebra in there. I get negative 12 minus 2 plus 6 is plus 4 lambda, and then lambda squared plus 7 is 0, and so lambda squared plus 4 lambda minus 5 is 0. I factor my equation, and I know that I have to get a plus 5 and a minus 1 equal to 0, and so lambda equals negative 5 and lambda equals 1. And so these two values here, these are my eigenvalues. These are my eigenvalues. Okay? And this is my characteristic polynomial. My characteristic polynomial. Okay, so now I want to find the eigenvectors. To find the eigenvectors, I'm going to, this particular eigenvalue will have a vector, and this one will as well. So let us start, and I'll switch to green. So if lambda equals negative 5, well, if I look here, if lambda is equal to negative 5, then it's 2 minus negative 5, which is 7, 7, negative 1, negative 5 into here gives me a negative 1 as well. And so here is if lambda is negative 5. But if we go back to our original idea, it said a minus i lambda times x equals 0. Right? This was my initial equation from the very get-go. I needed to solve this equation here. Well, if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to solve a minus lambda i times x is equal to 0, well, I have to times it by x, and I know it has to be 0. So I multiply it out, I get 7x plus 7y is 0, and I get a negative x minus y equal to 0. Now, if you look carefully in these equations, they're the same equation, just different multiples of the same equation. If you get that, it means you're on the right track. That always happens. So if I take this now, I know that 7x is equal to negative 7y, and x is equal to negative y. And so this will also give me the same thing, that x is equal to negative y. And so I had said earlier that there's an infinite amount of solutions. Well, y could be 1 and x would be negative 1. y could be 2, right, and x would be 2. If y is 3, x is negative 3, and so on and so forth. And so what we do is we just choose one value. I know the x, y. I choose one value. Let's make y equal to 1. That means x will be negative 1. And we put a parameter t in front where t is any real number, and then this is the infinite amount of solutions. This is one of the eigenvectors or the eigenvalue of negative 5. So this here is one of the eigen, one of the infinite eigenvectors. Okay? So we do the same thing for lambda equal to 1. So if lambda equals 1, well, I plug it into this matrix here. Let me call this down so I don't have to keep referring to it. Okay, so I pull that down. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to plug lambda in here. And so when I plug lambda in, I get 2 minus 1 is 1, and 7, and negative 1, and negative 7, times xy is equal to 0, 0, which is the equation I'm solving. And so then when I solve this, again, I get x plus 7y equals 0, or negative x minus 7y equals 0. And again, these equations are the same. They just differ by a multiple. And so if I solve one of them, I know x is equal to negative 7y. And again, if I want to find my eigenvector, I can let y be any number I'd like. I'll just choose 1. If y is 1, x will be negative 7. And I know I'm going to parameter there because that means that y could be any value I wanted. And so this here is one of the infinite eigenvectors as well. So here is the second eigenvector for the eigenvalue of lambda equal to 1. And so they always come in pairs. They have to know that they go together. This lambda equal to 1 matches this particular eigenvector. And lambda being negative 5 matches this vector. And there is your introduction to eigenvectors and eigenvalues.